What's up, guys? I'm Alan Branch from Project 49, and with me today, of course, is my sidekick, Dustin. What's up, Dustin? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. You too, my man. And our special guest we have with us today, Dr. Minkoff. And many of you guys that follow us know that we are just fascinated with this product, uh, Perfect Amino, because we're all about a protein-focused uh, nutrition plan. So we decided to bring the man on board to talk about Perfect Amino. Dr. Minkoff, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Oh, man, you're welcome. So you're in, you're in Clearwater. Clearwater, Florida, yeah. Okay, great. So, what you uh, could you give the listeners who may not know who you are kind of your background and what you do down there? Sure. I I originally went to med school at the University of Wisconsin, and I went to uh, UC California, UC San Diego, and did a, a a specialty training in pediatrics, and then a fellowship in infectious disease. And I was doing research in antiviral drugs and doing a hospital clinical practice in infectious disease. And after doing that for about 15 years, I switched careers and became an emergency room doctor. And I did that for about 15 years. Um, my wife, uh, in the meantime, we moved to Florida and my wife became ill. Um, and I, it turned out that what had happened was is that she had had the amalgams in her teeth taken out improperly they're 50% mercury. When the dentist drilled them out, like 14 amalgam fillings, the mercury with the high-speed drill aerosolizes. And it got in her throat and she swallowed it and she got sick. And she was interested in health. She's a nurse. And we sort of tried to figure out what was wrong with her. And it sort of led us on this path to figure out that she was actually mercury toxic. And... Um, it got me, you know, sort of looking at other ways that you could apply medicine. And out of that, we started a sort of an experimental clinic here in Clearwater, which is called LifeWorks Wellness Center, where we had one room and we had a couple of friends who were, um, their dads had gotten heart attacks at early ages and they wanted to do this thing called chelation, which is a way to get the heavy metals out of your blood. So lead and arsenic and mercury and calcium, uh, if it clogs up the arteries, can lead to heart attacks. So we did this little clinic, got certified in doing chelation, did this little clinic where four of our friends were getting these treatments and then other people started to call. And so I started to just go everywhere and learn what I could about other ways besides regular medicine. Now, as an emergency room doctor, you know, I could, I was really an expert at trauma and heart attacks and broken hips and drug overdoses. But most people that need medical attention don't have that problem. They have diabetes and obesity and, you know, heart attacks and, you know, they have other things. And regular medical approaches to these aren't often the best way to go about it because people get on a lot of medicines. The medicines have side effects. And rather than sort of focus on what's the underlying problem going on in this body, why am I tired? Why do I hurt? Why can't I sleep? Why am I depressed? Why can't I exercise? Uh, why do I have osteoporosis? Why is my blood sugar running 130 or 140? Is to then take a you sort of another look at, at one point in their life, they were healthy and their body worked. And then at the point where they're at their life now, their body isn't healthy and it doesn't work. And what happened in between is that they got m m sort of two major things. One is they got exposed to stuff that put things in their body, which were poison and didn't allow their cells to really work. And they probably weren't eating right. And most likely they had problems with their digestion in their gut and they weren't absorbing the nutrients that they're getting and they were nutrient deficient. So if you take the average person walking around the United States or the world for that matter, and they're not on supplementation and they're eating a regular diet and you say, let's just see what your vitamin D level is in your blood. And 99% of the time, it'll be below a level that is really good for them, really healthy. A low vitamin D can lead to immune deficiency. We know that virtually all of the guys who died with COVID have very low vitamin D levels. 
um, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, all kinds of things occur when you don't have enough vitamin D. Now, you're supposed to get your vitamin D from sunshine. You know, the sunshine, if you have unprotected, if you're not wearing sunscreen, unprotected exposure to sun, and you're living in, an, in, a, in a place where you're not too north or not too south, the sun will convert the oils in the skin to active vitamin D. But unfortunately, the whole United States is saturated with an herbicide called Roundup. And so virtually all of the meat and the produce, grains and dairy products and fruits and vegetables and groundwater are saturated with glyphosate. So I have measured thousands of patients' levels of glyphosate in their body, and I have never found one that didn't have any. And glyphosate blocks the conversion of vitamin D in the skin to active vitamin D. That's why people, even if they're in the sun, like myself included. So I'm a triathlete and I spend a lot of time riding or running or swimming and I do as much of it outdoors as I can. And I don't usually use sunscreen unless I'm going to be like out for a long time and I can risk burning. But my, my vitamin D level, the low level for, for uh, LabCorp is below 30, you're too low. And I run 34 if I don't supplement with probably eight or 10 hours of sunshine a week. If I don't take it, my level's too low. We know from like, like really good epidemiology that people who have natural levels between 70 and 90, that they reduce their incidence of cancer, of all forms of cancer, by about 50%. There's no drug, there's no supplement, there's no anything that reduces your risk factor of cancer by that much, but vitamin D does if you're in a 70 to 90 range. So I have to take 12,500 milligrams a day of vitamin D to keep my level. I run usually like 75, 80. So this is just sort of one example of you can be deficient and you don't eat the right things. And we're in an environment where there's tens of thousands of toxins that we're exposed to pretty much on a daily basis. Not even counting the medications that people are prescribed because they're toxins too. You may need one for a while, but if you can restore your health, you don't need it. But you go to the, you know, you go fill up your car with gas. You're going to get a whiff of stuff. You're going to walk on your lawn barefoot. And the guy was just there putting the weed killer on the lawn and you're eating fruits and vegetables that aren't organic. And you're, and you're, you know, you're getting exposed to this stuff and they poison people. And that's why they get sick. So our clinic. So now we have a clinic. It's a, it's a very large clinic. It's one of the largest ones in the United States where our main focus is on people who have chronic unsolved medical problems and they don't um and they the average has been to about 13 doctors and uh about 85 percent of the time we actually figure them out where we find the deficiency or we find the toxicity or the infection and we're able to help them get better um we do work with some high-end athletes but basically the problems are the same you know in a in an olympic swimmer who swims 100 meters a hundredth of a second is like 10 hours. And if you can improve their physiology with the optimum nutrition and minimum toxicity and make sure that they have no deficiencies, they can get that little bit of edge to make it. I work with a lot of pro cyclists, you know, another couple watts going up a mountain is the difference between maybe 25.1 miles an hour and 25.2 miles an hour. And that's the guy that's gonna win the Tour de France. So these are little things in very high performance people. But if you take someone who's been on the couch for five years, because they go anaerobic when they try to walk to the bathroom, you know, their physiology is so damaged that the stress of that is like someone running a hundred yard dash is all out. But their effort, their equivalent effort is they try to get up and walk to the couch that you can improve their physiology and then they can, you know, they can walk around the block or they can lift some weights and they can get an improvement in their life. 
Well, it sounds like we've got about 18 hours worth of video we need to be covering uh, because that alone would be a great topic. Just sounds like you're talking vitamin D. Uh, so we might have to skip. Oh, I left out. Oh, sorry. I didn't interrupt you. Some There's some clicking going on here somewhere. I don't know. Someone's yeah, I, typing. I think, yeah. So it's not coming from your end at all? No. Do you have anything? No, it's stopped. Yeah, right now I don't hear anything. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I want anyway, to I can say one thing about, 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 you know, so when I first got into this, what I knew, which is like, like we started the clinic in 1997 and by 2000, actually what I was looking for is I was trying to detox my wife with mercury and I couldn't find, I couldn't find anything that was really good at it that wasn't harmful and that wasn't a drug. And I worked with a biochemist and we came up with a product. It's one of the body health products. It's the first product called Metal Free. And it was, a, it was a sublingual spray that you could give someone and it would bind to their heavy metals and it would clean them out. And it cleaned her out. And after we did it with probably 25, 30 patients, I thought maybe other doctors would like this. Why don't we manufacture it and sell it? And so we started this company called Body Health. And that's where Perfect Amino came from because we, we then added that product line in. And um, so that's a sort of a second thing that I do at the same time. So I have the, I'm, I'm in the, the regular clinic, you know, probably 50 hours a week. And then I have body health, which is my nutrition company, which we, we make these products, which are just like the premium best stuff you can get. And I use all that in house, but then lots of other people and nutritionists and guys like you, they use it for their clients because it's just really good stuff. Well, and you know, of course, what got us started was uh, perfect amino and I want to ask you a question about Perfect Amino, uh, but I want to kind of do two questions at once. Okay. I want to talk about the importance of getting enough protein because we're a very protein centered training program because we're all about growing and preserving muscle mass. And our target audience is 35 and up. Uh, it, our oldest now is in late 70s. And uh, that's our goal. We want to put on as much lean muscle as we can and preserve it to prevent uh, sarcopenia and some age-related muscle loss problems. Yes. So th that's important. And, and I want to, I want you to tell us how important it is to get enough protein. And then <laughs> when I discovered perfect amino, I called body health and I understood it was a way to ensure I was getting that high quality protein. But the question that I asked your staff was, why have I been a trainer for 25 years? And never heard of this. I want to know. So if you could kind of combine that first question, uh, how important is it to get enough? And then we'll kind of uh, go into this one. Uh, how did you discover the power of amino acids? Well, one of the things that I, so I, most of the stuff that I have figured out, I figured out because I had a problem and I was looking for a solution. So I'm a triathlete. I've done 43 Ironman triathlons. So I've done a lot of training over a lot of years. And um, I got injured. I, 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 I injured my hamstring. Um, this was probably about 12 years ago. And I could not figure out how I could get it healed because every time it felt like it was okay and I went to the track or I tried a hard workout, I could feel it and I knew that if I kept going, I was going to tear it. So, and I tried everything. I'm a medical doctor. I have access to everything. I could, I could, I chiropractored it and acupunctured it and massaged it and heated it and vibrated it and injected it and it wouldn't heal. And uh, I then ran into a friend who had some essential amino acids and he had gotten them from Europe. And he said, why don't you try this stuff? So he gave me a couple of bottles and I tried it and I found that within about four to six weeks, my leg felt strong and I went to the track and I pushed it a little bit and it didn't bother me. And then the couple of days later, I wasn't even sore and I thought, oh, maybe I got a solution. So I started using this. About three months later, I was training for Ironman Canada. I went to Ironman Canada. I'd done the race about 10 times. I had my best time ever by a lot. And I got a really a lot of physiologic changes. I had been more or less a lacto-ovo vegetarian for quite a few years. 
And I thought the last thing that I was, was protein deficient. And I started measuring my serum amino acids and I found that they were low. And then in the clinic, I started measuring amino acid levels of my patients. And I found that all the sick people were low. Almost all the athletes were low. Everybody was low. Whether they were eating a lot of protein, you know, you take guys who are on, say, like an Atkins type diet, their serum amino acids were low. All the vegetarians and vegans were really low. And these levels weren't my standards, they're the lab standards. And I found that because proteins, either people aren't eating enough, or there's such a problem in with people's intestines these days, so many people are taking either prescription or over-the-counter acid blockers, you know, Pepsid and Nexium and Tagamet. And these block the stomach from making acid. And you can't digest protein if you don't have acid in your stomach. So people would get heartburn after they ate some Italian sausage or something. And they thought, well, if you watch the ads on TV, it says, well, just take some Nexium before you get up. You know, when you get up in the morning, and you'll be able to eat the sausage and then it won't bother you and you'll be fine. But your stomach is supposed to have an acid level of one to two when you eat and when you take nexium it's seven which is like water and so you block protein digestion you also by doing that the bacteria that come in with your food because the food we eat isn't sterile like you don't boil your food before you eat all of it so there's bacteria on there you went to a restaurant and the you know the table that he cut the salad on it's not sterile and bacteria and parasites and funguses come in with our food. What's supposed to happen is that when it hits your stomach, the acid kills it. So that then when the food goes into your small intestine, you're not getting infected with all this stuff. But if you take Nexium, you're getting infected. And one of the biggest problems with people now is this thing called SIBO. It's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, S-I-B-O. Why? They don't have acid in their stomach. The bacteria that come in with their food now grow in their small intestine and they ferment things. And so you get heartburn and GERD and bloating and gas and maldigestion and the lining of the small intestine that's supposed to be able to absorb the digested food gets messed up so that it doesn't do it efficiently. And one of the results is low amino acid levels in the blood, therefore low availability of the building blocks of protein in the body, and then you get a degrade of the health of the body. The whole immune system is protein. Many of the hormones are protein. All your muscles, tendons, ligaments, organ tissue are protein. Neurotransmitters, these are the things, the chemicals that the brain communicates with, you know, like serotonin and dopamine and GABA. These are made out of amino acids. And the lining of your gut every four days is supposed to grow a new lining because there's so much stress on it. But if you don't have enough protein, it might turn over every six days, eight days, 10 days. Or you work out, you know, you do a, fail, a, a, a workout to failure and you're sore for five days. If you have enough amino acids, many people will recover in 24 to 48 hours because the body got stressed, but it doesn't have enough amino acids in order to replace the torn fibers, the micro tears that occur with a, su a successful workout. And you don't, and so you can't do it because the, the repair hasn't occurred. So, so I think, go ahead. So I think protein, while people, you know, think that they get enough on a level of in their cells, they're not, they don't have enough for the various reasons I just talked about. And that supplementing amino acids can make a huge difference to people pretty much across the board. And we have thousands of success stories of people from menopausal women to professional athletes to people with cancer who get a, a real improvement in how their body works and how they feel if they take perfect amino. So one, one question I have is, so let's the problem lies with the uh absorption 
of the foods that we're eating, right? So digestion and absorption. So if you so if you look at a label and it says like people are drinking whey and collagen protein shakes, our clients before we get them on perfect amino, and yeah. they're looking at this label going, well, I got forty from this shake, and then I, and my chicken breast said twenty five, and then right. these three eggs are twenty four. So hey, yeah. I'm 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 rolling. But what they don't understand is they're not getting that. And I think another confusion is it's not the protein, it's the conversion to amino acids that you're absorbing, which is, I think there's a little confusion. People don't understand that amino acids is how that correlates to be in protein. Could you go over that with them? Yeah. So I think it's two things there. If you go to a, your average dietitian and she, and she says she's going to put you on an X calorie diet and she wants 30% of your calories to be protein calories. And so she'll say kind of what you said. Okay, if you have two eggs, so that's 14 grams of protein. And you have this yogurt and it's another 12 grams of protein. And you have a tuna fish sandwich and that's 20 grams of protein. And so I, you need to have 60 grams of protein a day and you got your 60 grams. And oh, oh, and, but you were short a little bit. So let's, you know, a piece of, of wheat bread that you had at four grams of proteins and the bean burrito you had at another six grams of protein and, and you're all good. Now, that's thinking that the equivalent value of each of those proteins is the same. And it isn't true at all. Because those proteins are all made out of different amounts of amino acids. And we need some more than others. And if the balance isn't right, you can eat 14 grams of egg protein, about which seven are actually utilized by your body. But of the 14 grams of the yogurt, only about three of those grams of protein are actually able to be utilized by your body to make your own protein. So at the end of the day, a lot of people, it may show 60 grams, but really they don't have 60 grams. They might have 15 or 18 grams and they actually don't have enough because the quality of the protein, the biological value of the protein isn't there. Now in dietitian, dietary science, and, and nutrition science, this is not widely appreciated at all. And the companies that promote most of this stuff, they'll say like whey protein. And what they say is they have this thing called the digestibility index, like it's got a 100% digestibility index, which means that it is digested and it is absorbed, but only about 16% of the whey protein that you eat can your body convert into its own proteins so, because it's made of the wrong stuff for us humans. If you're a cow, it works really good or a calf, but if you're a human, it isn't the right thing. Now, if you could get human milk as a supply, it's really good. It's the highest quality protein available other than perfect amino. But you, you know, Nursing women that donate their milk is not very common. Okay, so um, uh, so what we want is to be able to look at that and then supply essential amino acids so that you get what you need. And an analogy that people could 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 think with, you know, is let's say that we're in a in the manufacturing business of making cars, and our basic car has a chassis. So a body, four wheels, a motor, and a steering wheel. And then you could have something that you could drive. What if I brought to your manufacturing plant a hundred wheels and 25 chassis and 25 motors and one steering wheel? How many cars could you make? Well, only one car. And then what are you going to do with all the other stuff? You don't have room in your lot to store anything. So it's going to go into the junkyard or you're going to send it back. Now, our body doesn't have a protein storage depot. Like it has a fat storage depot, okay? And it has a glycogen storage depot. So there's ways to store carbs and fats. We don't have a protein storage depot other than our own flesh, our organs and our muscles and our tissues and our bones. 
So if you eat, so the equivalent of the analogy, let's say whey protein or soy protein, which have 16 or so percent usability, what you're delivering is a lot of extra junk that the body actually can't use. And it's got to be gotten rid of. And you may have seen this yourself. I have a, there's a, there's a group in Miami that, that are using perfect amino now, but before and there, it's a bodybuilding fitness group. And they were having their guys take 200 grams a day of whey protein. And not only did they have trouble with their stomachs because most people can't handle that much whey protein, bloating and gas. This, this is like they couldn't take it, but he was trying to get enough protein in them to get significant build on these guys. Disgusting. Yeah. He's raising his hand. Okay. So I, so I said, look, if you take 10 grams of perfect amino twice a day, you will have zero stomach problems. You can dump all the whey protein and you will get a much better response on your workouts than before. And he calls me three weeks later and he says, I can't believe it because perfect amino 99% of what you're putting in the body actually can use. And on the whey protein, only 16% of it, the body can use. So it's, so there's no leftover junk, you know, and this kind of interestingly translates over to like people who have liver disease or kidney disease where they have to limit their nitrogen. They have to limit how much protein they take because they can't get rid of it because most of the protein that they're eating, they're not able to use it in their body. And you can give, you can give these kind of, these kind of uh, patients perfect amino and they're, their nitrogen levels in their blood doesn't go up because the body is using those proteins to make its own structure. And then it doesn't have leftover waste that it's got to get. So if somebody had, for example, stage three kidney disease, uh, what do they have any limitation or is perfect amino? Like, is it going to help them? Is there any danger to them? Uh, where would they be at? Most people with stage three kidney disease, let's say they're just pre-dialysis or they're, they're even on dialysis. Usually the kidney doctor to protect them from getting more nitrogen than they can get rid of. Because the main function or one of the main functions of the kidney is to get rid of excess nitrogen. Now the difference between a carbohydrate and a fat and a protein, they all have the same basic structure. Okay, It's carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. And the difference between a protein and a carb and a fat is that the protein has nitrogen on it. That makes it a protein. Okay, amino in Greek means nitrogen. So amino acids make up proteins. So proteins have amino groups. Now, if that amino is put into the body structure, there's no nitrogen left over that you got to get rid of. So with perfect amino, there's basically less than 1% excess nitrogen. If you take whey protein, there's 84% excess nitrogen. So if you wow. take a lot of it, or you take, say, meat, 33% of meat is utilized, 67% isn't utilized. You produce nitrogen. And the doctor does a test in the blood called BUN, blood urea nitrogen. It's the nitrogen excess that comes from eating more protein than you can either use or get rid of. And if the liver can't pull the nitrogen out, turn it into urea, and then the kidney can't get it out, you're going to build your level of BUN. And so the kidney doctor is looking at the patient. He's saying, okay, your BUN's 50. It's way too high. I have to restrict your protein because you're getting too much excess, you know, from the food that you're eating. Now, if you said to that patient, and this has been done experimentally, eat all the fruits and vegetables that you want because there's basically almost no nitrogen in fruits and vegetables. The levels of protein are negligible. And then make most of your protein from perfect amino where you will get practically no excess nitrogen. There are people on dialysis who had to go three times a week and they'll go one or two times a week because they don't need the dialysis because they don't have excess nitrogen. So it can right. make a huge difference. So, you know, what's very interesting is, uh, I have a family member that has the stage three kidney disease. So I was really asking for him. And yeah. I, we were talking today, it's my brother. And I was like, you know, uh, I, I heard Dr. Minkoff say this in a, in an interview, don't ask your doctor about this because they're not going to know. So it, it, you would think that the modern medicine would be picking that up and just running with it, you know, to, to, 
you know? So what we do is our there, there's a one there's one other aspect of this too. This let me just jump in and mention oh. is that when you put someone on a real low protein diet, which a lot of these guys are on, their body breaks down. And so they get decreased immune function and you see their skin start to fall apart and they get weak and their hormone levels go down because they're not getting enough protein. But the doctor can't give them enough protein because it'll make their BUN go up. So the doctor's caught in this catch-22 and all he really has to do is, okay, let's start five grams of amino acids three times a day, follow the BUN. You know, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody medical advice here, but I think you can watch this and you can get a level of amino acids in where you're actually nourishing your body without getting the BUN high so you can protect your immune system and your skin and the rest of the stuff. And the same for people on dialysis, because you put your blood through a dialysis machine, which is a mechanical device that cleans it. It goes through these filters and things. It's traumatic on the blood. It breaks the blood cells up. Almost all these people are very anemic and they're exhausted and they bruise all over the place and their skin is broken down because they're on low protein diets. They're on a mechanical device that damages their blood. And so you put these people on perfect amino and you work with the doctor, gradually get the levels up till they're taking enough so that now their anemia starts to go away and their skin heals and their energy comes back. And they can really do much, much better without any sort of down cost. And you know, the cost of perfect amino, if they're taking 20 grams a day or even 30 grams a day, compared to what the expenses of dialysis and all the various rigmaroles that have to go on to keep these people alive is like, it's like nothing. Well, we we calculated perfect amino is cheaper than buying chicken. So right. you can get right. equal if you or can. a good piece of fish or a filet mignon. Right. Way so yeah. uh we got a we wanted to show you just because you took the time to come on board. We talked a little bit before we started about what our program was like. And you know, what we generally recommend, we we have our guys on multiple servings of perfect amino. We they still eat meat. You know, we think the nutrients and vitamins in the meat and the vegetables you still need, but they're able to get their protein intake now without over consuming their calories. Right. So we talked about this for weight loss. Our guys, what we recommend is a caloric deficit, but right. you've got to still not re not get in a nutrient deficiency and then reach an adequate protein threshold. And Perfect Amino has done gangbusters for that. So we have one or two of our guys and I'd like for you to hear a little bit from them and then give them a little feedback if you don't mind. Love to. Okay. So this is Casey, one of our guys, and he's been Casey. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you, Alan? I'm good, man. Hey, how listen, are you? I got to say for the doc, uh, go over kind of what you did with us and your results and how long it took and kind of your experience with Perfect Amino. What I did. Uh, so June the 8th, you and I kicked off Project 49. There was a long history prior to that uh, last year. And it's it's funny because you mentioned an injury, um, a hamstring injury. Mine was a shoulder in November of last year. I spent March to November lifting heavy. I was taking a ton of whey protein, trying to get 1 to 1.5 grams per body pound that, that I weighed. Um, a lot of milk, a lot of whey protein powder type stuff. Lifting heavy, got hurt. And I lost maybe 10, 15 pounds in that process. But uh, from November till April, I was in physical therapy uh, and wasn't able to do very much. And I gained it all back. Um, April, uh, I've worked with Alan a little bit over the last year plus, uh, I guess at this point, with, uh, with what we call round one boxing. So I knew him a little bit prior you know, to this. But I told him and said, hey, good news, man. I'm about to start back up what I did last year. And he said, stop, 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 stop. Let's talk about that. So, so we started with uh, getting me into Project 49. And what that, that changed the entire world for me. And this is before you came in, to be quite honest. So I, I had come in. I said, well, I've got a – he told me, I've got this supplement I want you to, to work on as well. I said, well, I've got a lot of leftover from when I was injured, so I'm probably going to go through that first. And he, he convinced me to set it aside – he said, you might be able to use a little bit of it later here and there, as long as you don't go over your calorie intake, but the whole rules are changing. So um, so that's what I did. I, I, I went with exactly what he said to do. And that, 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 you know, without getting into every single detail, the right amount of water, the right amount of rest, the right amount of stimulus to, to, to grow with the right amount of protein 
helped by perfect amino specifically and intermittent fasting. So, and, and, and I did that, uh, started on June the 9th um, and, you know, uh, September 11th, 2020, I'm 33 pounds lighter than I was 12 weeks ago. Um, I'm strong. I was uh, back then, and just just to play, I got on the bench uh, Saturday and just just pressed up what I could uh, with uh, with dumbbells, and I was doing bigger dumbbells than I did when I was doing them last year. So we 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 really focus on you know focus very heavily on strength training. We we do some interval high intensity interval training for uh, the purpose of um, the ability to move in space as we age, just making sure that we're able to move. Um, but it, and, and it may be a little bit of a bonus in terms of, of fat calorie burn, but it's, it's where we, where we really focus is on the strength training, getting the stimulus, getting, finding true failure so that we're always burning calories. And so that we're always building lean muscle. And so, uh, I've changed my diet around completely. I've, I've increased the water intake and I've been using perfect amino really almost since the first of project 49 from that. I can say there's several things that have happened. Number one is I'm still able to get more protein than I got before. And I've introduced intermittent fasting. You cannot do that with any other, you know, any of these other proteins because you're going to go over your calorie count and, and, and break your fat. I'm able to get, you know, 60 grams of two scoops in just like that. And Casey, and, what, what and are you doing daily? Fast. What do we have you on right now daily on Perfect Amino? Uh, Perfect Amino? Uh, I take about five scoops daily. So I do two first thing in the morning when I wake up, I do about 30 minutes before my workout. I do two more. I do one more in the evening. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm doing, and I'm doing a six day push pull cycle right now, as far as strength training is concerned. Plus I'm doing interval training three times a week. So his recovery doc, we, we recommend as they get a little more advanced, we're on a, a push pull. And what we've noticed is that we can go five, six days in a row alternating push pull and what you said mm -hmm. we, we generally want 36 hours but we do every other day in that push pull cycle and we've had zero problems with any recovery since perfect amino no yeah, yeah. anyway uh, by the way happy birthday <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> you're welcome thank you sir this is this is super interesting because we i worked with the doctor who was the doctor for lance armstrong and the tour de france team back uh, probably 10 years ago or 12 years ago and um they have a very they had a very specific nutrition program and of course after each day on the tour de france they would um they would get ivs and they have a chef and everything was calculated perfectly because they can't gain weight and they have to keep their calories up and they have to keep their energy up and you know, five, six hour day on a bicycle is a lot of physical stress. And all they did was the, the top three riders added 10 grams of perfect amino three times a day during the tour. Now the history of it had been that always by the end of the tour, everyone was broken down. Any, everyone had tendonitis, everyone's performance was way down. Yeah. And they yeah. found that, with, that when they did the perfect amino during the tour, at the end, they were stronger than, they were stronger than when they started and they didn't have yeah. the breakdown. And that yep. the body has a tremendous ability to recover if you can replace in it the things that it needs when you're working it really hard. So Other than the, you're, yeah. what you're saying is the same thing. Yep. Other than the fact that the workouts are hard, uh, I never dread one because I'm tired. You know, my energy levels are up. Um, in boxing, I'm able to bounce in front of the bag even when I'm exhausted uh, and the energy levels up. My hair's thicker than it was, you know, <laughs> so... Just, you know, and I'm starting to go kind of bald a little bit. If I showed it off from the right angle, it wouldn't be so pretty. It's not pretty now, but, but you know, it's, I'm able to, uh, I'm, uh, everything's coming around so, so well. Um, you know, the, the, the lean muscle mass is coming in exactly where I want it, the way I want it. The weight loss is there. Uh, the diet's there. And by the way, I'm never hungry. You know, the, the, the diet that he has us on, that, that he's got us working with, I'm, I'm never hungry. Uh, and the perfect aminos, they're, you know, they're, I'm able to get those down and, and, and a few swigs of water and, and off I go. And it's a, it's a tremendously efficient way to, to get what I need. And I know that, you know, I need at least 200 grams because I'm 200 flat now. I started about 232, 233. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really easy for me to get there now. 
Um, and, and I'm probably operating a little bit above that level at this point. I, I did the math for Alan the other day, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm doing really hard training every day, and I'm I'm not tired. I'm not hurt, not tired, not sore. Um, and it's just amazing how how much I used to hurt after lifting, especially in the first weeks. It is that that constant tear down, that constant soreness. I have not experienced that uh, with the slow, deliberate, controlled method of of, of weightlifting, body weightlifting, etc. You know, combined with this, this has been a an absolute godsend for me. So thank you for bringing this to the market because I'm I'm loving it. Hey, I love hearing it, and it's really well done in your part. And Thank very you. interesting, Casey, thanks, buddy. We appreciate you stepping sure. in. And one thing's very interesting, uh, Doc, we don't, we do rarely touch a free weight. Everything is with resistance bands body weight. and body weight, resistance bands and body weight, maybe a few dumbbells here and there, but most of our strength is with the band. And we've noticed with that, we can put in even more volume with less, with zero joint pain of any kind, especially with perfect amino. Right. Right. So uh, we got another one of our guys and and, you know, we basically it's kind of like thanking you for coming on board. I'm sure you like the feedback, but uh, this is John and John. I'm going to let him come on. This is John Joyce. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, John. Hey, Dr. Mingo. We're good. Uh, John, if you got a second, we'll see if your Internet holds up. Dustin was having a little trouble with his. Um, could you give us a little quick your story of what uh, kind of what you've done and using Perfect Amino? So yeah, I started out lifting weights in uh, 2012. I was a 300 pounds, lost a lot of weight uh, doing interval training, pounding my body and started coming to Alan's gym about a year ago. And he, he told me when I was ready to listen and do things the right way to come see him. Well, last November he walked in, he said, are you ready to listen yet? Cause he saw me hobbling around he saw me picking up big weight and he would laugh and snicker as he walked by <laughs> and say, good job. So I, I started uh, drinking from the fountain of knowledge. And what I was able to do by dropping all the weights, picking up the bands, doing body weight exercises, applying the proper stimulus, I was able to see a drastic weight loss very quickly. I changed my diet around drastically, went to intermittent fasting, but I was always in the back of my mind going, am I going to get weaker? Am I going to get weaker? It's just a rubber band. It's just a rubber band. You know, and finally, I've, I've got the faith to, to have stuck with this. And Alan brought me some supplements. And I was doing a lot of the bodybuilding.com supplements, putting a lot, a lot of garbage in my body. And I said, I'll give it a try. So I started out with two servings a day. Now I'm up to six to eight servings a day. I only eat about five hours a day. And I feel like my lean muscle mass has increased. My body fat's down about eight inches off my waist. Legs, arms are bigger. My wife's much happier. My energy levels are up and I've got a high energy job. And I just found that I'm still as strong, if not stronger than I was when I weighed 300 pounds and now I'm at 250. So we're great. Nice so 50 pounds down. No more hobbling, no joint pain. You're able to do agility work and you recover. How many days a week are you guys doing now total? So we do the Punisher series three days a week, and then we'll do agility square two to three days a week. And, and that's our sprint now. I haven't been able to I haven't been able to sprint in 10 years. And and that's basically our, our program for Project 49, uh, Doc. We we run on a five to six day routine. Uh, but it alternates between strength in those intervals to allow that recovery time. It's kind of what we're on. So I, I think, you know, John losing 50 pounds and his wife looks, it looks incredible too. Uh, thought it'd be great for him to come on and give you a little bit of his feedback too. Thank you, John. You look great. Yeah. I sent you a video, Dr. Minkoff of the bench because I was amazed at how easy I moved weight that I used to struggle with. Wonderful. Since, without one lifting one. any weights at all, he was bench pressing 275 pretty easily without touching any weights, which kind of dismisses the idea that you have to lift free weights and you can't do it with bands. Right. Right. Hey, John. <laughs> the bands are so much safer. So much safer. Hey, so John. I, thanks for jumping in, buddy. Hey, thanks, everybody. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, John. So you're a favor of resistance bands also? Oh, I am. I am. You, they, you can't get hurt with it. 
you know, you, 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 yeah, I am. Well, I wanted to ask you a couple other things and we, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, so I've been reading a little bit of something like this protein threshold, like exactly how much you need to stimulate protein synthesis. And uh, some of the stuff that I'm reading puts you in, depending on your body weight, let's say we're going from 130 pound female to 200 pound male, somewhere between a 30 to 50 gram range of protein per feeding uh, to help you stimulate that protein synthesis. Can you, and then that was, that wasn't related to your program. That was another person I was listening to. Then yeah. they also mentioned that there's a, a certain amount of leucine needed for that uh, protein synthesis to occur. And so I matched up your uh, one serving of perfect amino happens to fall in that 30 gram range, which is right. one serving. And yeah. then the leucine is at 1.94 uh, in the, in the formula and it's a better absorption rate. So I figured that was just about right. Was that by design? And if it is or isn't, could you elaborate any more on, on that? Is that threshold like, like how much do I need to get exactly to stimulate that? And then what we recommend is that when, when our people follow that 30 to 50 gram, there's a spread based on body weight per feeding, okay supplement and perfect amino could of course be one of those right and the other could be a meal and then right. if the meal let's say that i eat a vegan meal then i need to substitute perfect amino because i want to get that 50 grams per feeding right can you talk about that yeah i mean i think what has to happen is that you have to get enough um what you're trying to do is get enough amino acids so that you can get the body to build what it has to build or recover from what it has to recover from what you're doing. And if it's too low, then the body's going to say, I can't like, like say you do a workout and you're, and, and you need X number of grams of protein in order to replace all the damage that you did. That if you're underneath that level, plus if you're underneath the level of what the average daily needs are like making blood and making hormones that you're going to you're going to be short and when you're short then the body's going to not recover you or it's going to lower your immune system we found with athletes that if they took enough perfect amino they could do a hard race or a hard workout like what i found myself i was training for 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 uh like training for ironmans that if you overtrain then the next week, the chances of getting a cold were really high. I get a cold, get a cough, get sniffles. But if I took enough perfect amino, I didn't get a cough or a cold. So I'm taxing the body on the one hand with workouts and I need to replace that. But I also need to remember that I got to keep my immune system up and hormones and bone and all the rest of the stuff up. So that if you take enough, then you can cover all your bases. And I think that's what happens with the Tour de France guys. You give them enough, they can still recover even from that kind of massive effort. And then you don't lose and you don't break the body down. And, you know, in terms of aging, you can go longer better because, you know, in aging, the average person between 20 and 60 loses 25 to 30 percent of their lean body mass, which is the sarcopenia. You know, it's not it's 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 a, it's a, it's a big indicator of aging and ill, and Ill health. So, you know, when I first started experimenting with the product, we were saying, okay, 10 grams three times a day is all you need. But really, for a lot of people, and me included, I need more than that. You know, I need more than that. And that I found that the levels that, that doing more did me better. And since there's no downside and there's no overdose and there's no interference with any known medication or anything, that I think people have to experiment. You know, I used to take two regular scoops leveled off. Now I'm taking two heaping scoops with each one. And then I found during my training, I'm doing endurance training mostly. I do some some stretch bands a couple of times a week, but most of my training is, you know, bikes and runs and swims, that if I'm replacing amino acids during that process, you know, like my water bottle has, has two scoops of our electrolytes, which is four grams of perfect amino, I add another scoop to the water bottle so that I'm getting nine, 10 grams of perfect amino. 
And I'm doing that every 90 minutes. And my body just really does well. It's hot, it's stressed, I'm going hard, but I really don't feel it. And I think that that's, so depending on the person's lifestyle, that you experiment with dose because you may need a lot more and you just have to go by how your body's doing. Well, one thing I, so, so you can't really overdose. No. You, you know, what happens if you overdose is then your, your BUN and your blood will go up a little bit. So if people are tracking their, their urea nitrogen and they're getting more than what they can utilize, then the body will turn it into calories. It won't hurt you. Okay. So uh, one thing that I'd like for our people to understand and anybody watching and guys, if you're in project 49, make sure you put a comment uh, in the section below. Thank Dr. Minkoff for coming. Um, you see running in the across the bottom, there's a special going this weekend. Uh, Dr. Minkoff's guys from, from Body Health set it up for us. And you want to use that link in this description and our code Project 49 to get a special discount in there. And you can check out some of the products. Uh, Dr. Minkoff, one thing that we like, and this is from a weight loss. And I want to make two comments. One, if you were not supplementing with Perfect Amino and you're doing endurance training and you're releasing that cortisol from that stress on your body, if you were not supplementing, you would be facing a loss of your lean muscle. Oh, sure. And lower testosterone and lower immune proteins. Uh, and so you know, for a while, the cortisol goes high, but then the cortisol goes low and then you're sort of sunk because your adrenal function goes way out the bottom. So I see a lot of athletes that come in and they're overtrained and there's their amino acid levels in their blood are low their testosterone's low their cortisol's low their dhea is low these and they're broken down and they've lost lean body mass and you know you look at the cyclists a lot of them have osteoporosis they they are they are they are eating up their bone protein with their workouts because they're not getting enough amino acids and so if you so you got to get enough and if you get enough your body will then compensate for whatever activity you're doing Okay. That, yeah. So, yeah, I love this. So another thing that we tell our people for weight loss, when they're on the vegan diet, and I did read somewhere that at one point you were, you, you had said, you said it earlier that you were vegan. I think it was calculated that for a 200 pound man to eat a vegan diet and get enough protein, it would be in the 27,000 calorie a day range. So it's almost, it's almost impossible. There are a few people who can be vegan or vegetarians. And when we measure their serum amino acids, they're okay. And I think that they have a unique intestine that acts sort of like a cow. You know, like a cow has bacteria in their intestine where they're able to manufacture amino acids and build a big body or a whale's eating spirulina, which is very low in essential amino acids. And, and because their gut is able to manufacture amino acids, very few of us can do it. So if you're eating vegan, you are going to be protein malnourished. And I, I, it's, it's not a hundred percent, but it almost is. And when I see amino acid profile on someone and I look and virtually all their amino acids at the very low end, I say, are you eating any animal protein at all? No, I'm a vegan. And you put them on perfect amino and you put them on good doses and you recheck them in three to six months, their amino acids are up and their fatigue is gone and they start to build muscle and they feel much better and their hormone levels go up and their hair thickens and it starts to grow and it really can make a difference because they're just deficient. So another side to that is, and this is one thing we, we like to explain to our clients, calories do matter. So if I'm eating enough meat to get the protein intake, which is you almost difficult, impossible as well, then my calories are going to be way higher. But you're bringing in perfect amino at a serving for two calories at 27 grams of protein for two calories. Good night. How much pea protein would you have to get to get 30 grams of protein? And how many calories would that be? I mean, you're it's sort of a miracle supplement to be able to consume that much protein and still keep the caloric intake low. Exactly. And most people who calorie restrict will be protein malnourished. Like, like we have a lot of cancer patients and we put them on ketogenic diets or people that have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, we put them on ketogenic diets because there's a, there's a benefit 
to doing that with their inflammation level and their nervous system or or if they're if they have cancer we want to very restrict their carbohydrates and they all get protein malnourished because you can't get enough protein in and be in ketosis for almost anybody but you can add perfect amino it doesn't raise blood sugar it doesn't raise insulin you can then give them enough protein or enough amino acids to supply their body protein so that they they don't have to get the calories with it we used to run weight loss programs in our clinic and we found that if we had people on severe calorie restrictions for every four pounds of, of fat that they lost they lost a pound of lean body mass wow. now, that is not good you know you get this this fat you know th these 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 lean people who are fat because they burned up all their all their amino acids and we found if we put them on perfect amino enough to keep their protein levels good without adding calories you could get people to lose fat but not deplete their bodies of amino acids and they wouldn't lose their body protein which is what you guys are doing which is exactly the right thing well um we appreciate that and that, that's why we bring you on we want to make sure we're always providing because you know there's a lot of information on the internet and not a lot of wisdom Right. You know, there's too much to sort through. So, we, you know, we we I think I, I read that there was a, a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, I think his name was uh, Friedman. And he said that uh, exercise uh, uh, exercise program should be based on its results, not its intentions. So we, we want that, uh, you know, we can actually show that this stuff is working. So I want to ask you an off the cuff question. And I know none of this can be medical advice. OK, this is a covid centered question that has to do with perfect amino. So if lysine is an antiviral and it's an essential amino, and I know that lysine I think has been used to treat herpes and some other viruses. Yeah. Then theoretically or scientifically can perfect amino because its dosage is so well absorbed is having those essential aminos also helping with the immune system. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and leucine as an antiviral is weak. Okay. I mean, it's not leucine or lysine. Leucine. So leucine. I'm is sorry. I'm sorry. Lysine. You're right. Lysine. You're li lysine. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Lysine. Lysine as an antiviral is, you know, it's like some people have recurrent herpes infections and we say, go on lysine. Don't do a thousand milligrams of lysine a couple times a day. And in some of those people, it will prevent recurrences. And some people are starting to get, they're starting to get a cold sore or something. They're starting to come out with a cold. I think it's fine to do and it's safe. But I think when you take perfect amino, you get way more, you get lysine, but then you get way more, which is what your immune system really needs. Because if you're going to build immune proteins, you know, like gamma globulins and cytokines and these other things that are needed to get an inflammatory or an anti-infectious response, that you that that you keep your baseline high and that if you do that maybe you need to add stuff as an acute thing but i find that if i keep my levels high my chances of getting sick or your chances of getting covid you know there's other things you want a high vitamin d level and you know it's antioxidants and things like that but that if you keep your amino acid levels high Overall, they are the structure of your body and your immune system and your hormone system, and you're going to be way better off. So if you were going to give, uh, like for me personally, if I feel like I've been in contact with COVID, I would, would I do increase my lysine for the antiviral effect, or would my five servings of perfect amino be sufficient? And then are you a vitamin D, zinc, uh, C guy for prevention? Oh, yeah. And quercetin. Quercetin is like vitamin C. It's a flavonoid. And it actually, um, with zinc and vitamin C, has her, impairs the virus's ability to replicate itself. And so, what's it yes. called? It's called quercetin. Q-U-E-R. C-I-T-I-N. Apples, onions are food sources, but you can go to the health food store and buy 500 milligram tablets of quercetin. And, you know, if people feel like they're getting sick or there's something, they're starting to come down with something, they should take, you know, zinc and quercetin and vitamin C as a, as a preventive. 
And the other thing that I would throw in there is if their vitamin D level is already high, you know, you're in a 70 to 90 range, you're good. But vitamin A, pure vitamin A, not the, not the, not, you know, not the, not the precursor to vitamin A, not beta carotene, but vitamin A is a very good antiviral. And if I feel like I'm coming down with something, I'll take six 25,000 milligram tablets of vitamin A once a day for three days. I think it's just like, it's, it's just like knocks it out really well. So a lot of this, uh, so what it would do is, you, uh, I don't know, can it prevent you from catching something or mostly what it would do would be have the immune system strong enough to knock it out and limit the, limit the symptoms? Well, I think if you starting to feel like you're breaking down, go for it right away. The earlier you get it, the better. Um, I think your baseline levels, you want to be good. So like we'll measure levels of, you know, vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin A and all those things and try to keep people optimized. But in any given day, depending on the stress in their life and their sleep and the rest of the stuff, if they feel like they're like, oh, I feel like something's coming on, is then blasted. Okay, so oh I want to I want to change gears because we've got a lot of people that have stayed with us the entire time today. If you're joining in now, guys, welcome. We're going to be wrapping up in just a minute. Make sure in the comments you put a thank you to uh, Dr. Minkoff for taking his time today. It's been awesome. And also check the link down below because for today and the weekend, Body Health is running a special offer just for our Project 49 followers. And we do consider if you're watching our videos in our channel, we consider you uh, one of our followers. You're with us. So please take advantage of that. So uh, you didn't know I was going to do this, but I want you to talk about some other products. Like uh, I love the reds and the greens. Mm -hmm. My wife loves that. The calm, love it. Um, good stuff. Multivitamin, uh, you've got a defender. Uh, the new one, the organ, uh, the organ complex. Maybe give us maybe two or three of what your favorites are. Okay, so I take the multi every day. I take the greens and the reds every day. I actually throw them in with the perfect amino powder and it tastes really good. And then I get two things down at the same time. I love the Inflammarest, which is a, which is for inflammation. It's quercetin and, um, and boswellia and ginger in a really absorbable form. So if you have inflammation stuff going on, it really helps. A couple of those, a couple times a day, maybe three times a day. Really great product. Um, we just started the organ complex. So this is, is um, organic animals that are free range and they're not full of drugs or hormones or anything. And they're concentrates of, I don't know if I'll get all the organs right here, but adrenal and, and liver and well, yeah. anyway, five, five, uh, pancreas, there's five organ concentrates. It's five capsules a day. These are the most nutritious parts of the animal. I was raised on not dark meat and avoid organs. So if you're a person like me, who it was white meat chicken only or white meat turkey, the best part of nutrition is missing from those foods. So if you're eating livers and kidneys and hearts and brain and stomach, you know, you are getting a lot of this stuff, but most of us aren't. So it is packed with B vitamins and proteins and just essential things that you don't get that our ancestors ate because they were sort of a nose to tail community, but most of us aren't doing it. So I take five capsules of that every morning too. And uh, in a, you're perfect. Yeah. So, it, okay. So there isn't a, uh, no, okay. Carry on. I'm good. I mean, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do, as I walk into the bathroom and I have a, I have a picture there. I actually have bottles of another product we sell, which is called cocoon water. And it's a high oxygen, literally a high oxygen water. So I really like it. And I pour it in a shaker cup and I put two scoops of perfect amino and a scoop of reds or greens. I alternate each day. And we also have a, we have a molecular hydrogen product and I drop two of those cap, two of those little tablets in now there. What, what is that? What does that do? So it's, 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 it's actual hydrogen. Like if you put this stuff in water, it creates hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is an amazing antioxidant that goes right into your system and it calms down your DNA and your inflammatory stuff. And I find that as a recovery 
it's really good. Wow. So I make this cocktail every morning. I put it in there, fizzes up. I drink it down. And um, that's how I start my day. You know, I wash up and shave and then I usually go work out. And um, then later on, I come back and I take, I mean, I have a bunch of stuff that I take, but I take Inflamarest and I take our fish oil is really good fish oil. This fish oil is not like your routine fish oil. There are flavonoids. There are anti-inflammatory things in there with curcumin that are, it is really a good, it is really good. So most people that we measure, even if they're eating fish, don't have adequate levels of omega-3 fats. And omega-3 fats are just like amino acids. They're essentials. Every cell in your body, your brain, these need these things. And some people eat a lot of fatty fish, but a lot of people don't. And part of the problem with a lot of fish is a lot of mercury. So I take the fish oil every day and as, as part of my routine as well. Um, we are also exposed to gob levels of heavy metals and of chemical toxins. And we have two products. One's called Metal Free and the other one is called Body Detox. These are just brilliantly scientific products and they're sprays, so they're easy. And I take eight sprays of each. I take the, the Metal Free in the morning and the, and the Body Detox at night. And it helps me to keep my body moving out all the garbage that I'm breathing every day and that I'm being exposed, <laughs> excuse me, being exposed to. So those are, those are really like basic things that are maintenance for a human who wants to live a long time and have energy and enjoy, uh, on a, you know, on basically a toxic planet. The other thing that I take is the most people that we measure, if you're over 40, don't have enough enzymes being made by your pancreas to digest your food. Like we measure the levels of pancreatic enzymes in their stool and they're low, which means that they're not going to be digesting their protein optimally either. So you take a couple of, of these capsules. They're, it, it's, it's called, um, perfect. It's, it's a, it's a digest product. And, and what it does is it, it, you put it in when you eat and then the proteins that you do eat, the meat and the fish and the eggs that you eat, it helps to digest those, those proteins so that, and there's, a, there's acid in there too, because most people aren't producing enough hydrochloric acid and it really helps with digestion. So many people that I see, I put on that product and um, it's called full spectrum digest is really good. The other thing that I take is we make a really good, um, probiotic. And most of the people that we measure, if we measure the, how is their gut biome? Do they have the right bacteria in there? And most people don't. So take a couple of those capsules every day. And that helps to re-nurture your microbiome. And ultimately your gut health is being able to digest and be able to get in the food and have a good bacteria, which helps your immune system and a lot of other stuff. So those are the ones that are sort of my staples every day to um, to keep me going, and keep me healthy. You guys, uh, uh, when this is over, you need to rewind, get out a notepad and take down the doc's advice there. And uh, Dr. Minkoff, one of the thing that we say for Project 49 is our goal is to improve longevity and lifespan through lifestyle. So and that includes, of course, our strength and nutrition and body health has been a big part of helping get our clients the stuff that they need. You know, it's really true. You know, you think when you're 40 that you're not going to have the same goals or that you think when you're 70, you're not going to have the same goals and desire to be fit and be productive and be energetic and be healthy as when you're 40. And I can tell you that if unless you make a crazy decision, which I hear people say all the time, oh, I'm 60 or I'm 65 and I'm over the hill, and now I'm just going to die slowly, that you are already dead if you've decided that. And that I can say now, I'm 72, I have more and bigger goals. I'm doing more than I've ever done in my life, both <clears throat> business-wise and family-wise, and with the hobbies that I have. And I have no plans to slow down or cut back because you actually know more, have more resources usually at 70 than you do at 40, and you can do more. And who knows what the upside is, you know? 
what if 65 or 70 is a halfway point instead of an end point? You know, what if you could actually live productively to 100, 110, 120, because you were smart about exactly what you said, how you live, what you eat, how you exercise, of course, to how you think? That wouldn't that be fun? So why not? I think I think that that what what is perceived now and when you see the general public, what is perceived to them as normal to us is not normal. Being at 40, 50 years old, being 30 to 40 pounds overweight or more, not being confident, not being able to move, not liking how you look, how you feel, having no energy, not being able to sleep, having joint pain. They attribute that to age. And not being, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm insulting anyone, but I contribute that many times to slothfulness, poor diet, lack of discipline. You know, you don't listen. You, you don't follow direction. You, you can't sit around and eat pizza on the couch for three weeks in a row and then complain that your joints hurt because you're old. You know, so we're trying to dismiss that and go, guys, we're not planning on slowing down either. And people like you are an excellent role model. I'm 54. And when I was 24, I've done martial arts and kickboxing my entire life. When I was 24, the guys who were 30 said, you won't do that when you're 30. And then when I was 30, the guys who were 40 said, wait till you're 40. You won't be doing that anymore. Well, 54. So don't have any plans of slowing that down either. So we, we appreciate the, the role model and being willing to take the time just to go over the information with us. It's great. It's great. And, you know, the, the, we're, we all get programmed like like it's probably the same in North Carolina, but it's been really hot here this summer. So like this weekend, it was 95 degrees and it was 95 percent humidity and the heat index was 112. And the guy on the radio is saying, stay inside. Don't go outside. It's too hot. And my plan for the day was I need to get a six hour bike ride. I need to ride 90 miles on Saturday because I've got an Ironman in two months and I got to get, and I went out there and did it. And with the electrolytes and perfect amino and, oh, our bars are just like extraordinary. If you guys haven't had our, our food bars, they are, they are like, they're the best tasting bars ever. Anyway, that I can do that. And then the next day run three hours and swim two miles. And it's like, well, it's just a regular day. And, and, some of it is a consideration, but a lot of it is if you keep your fitness and you work at it and you do like yours, you have a plan, you follow the plan, just follow the plan. You guys know what you're doing. You're having massive success with people. You can show people, you can coach people on how to do it. And then they can get where they want to go, which is be like you, active and productive and enjoy, you know, and excited. Well, meanwhile, I want to be like you. Okay. So I'm uh, well, with your help. As a I'm Japanese sorry. guy, I decided a few years ago um, that I wanted to be the oldest guy to win Ironman World Championship uh, when I was 85 years old because that was the oldest guy that ever did it. And now there's a Japanese guy. He's 87 years old and he's on it. He's on it. And he's he won it at 85 and he's got no plans to slow down because he wants to set another world record at age 87. Now, to me, that's like the guy's living, you know, he's living. And as long as you're, you know, you're upright, you might as well just go for it because maybe you'll do it. I love that quote. And Dustin's me, his Internet was bad and he came over here to our studio to join in. And when you just said that quote, he threw a big thumbs up for that one. As long as you're upright, you might as well go for it. That might have to go on a T-shirt, Doc. <laughs> OK, good. Sure. All right, man. Well, look, we appreciate your time. And guys, if you're joining in a little late, we're wrapping up this call with Dr. Minkoff. He's the founder of Body Health. They've got some incredible products. First supplement. And Doc, I don't know if you knew this, but I've been tra uh, a trainer for 25 years and your products are the first thing I've ever wanted to endorse. I thank you. And we I just want to endorse you guys. And for all your guys, just follow the plan. Because I, I see the success and it's working and it's brilliant. So Super well done. Well, man, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time today. Hey, maybe we'll get back together again in the future and go over some more stuff. Anytime. Just let me All know. Right. All right, man. Thanks a lot. It was great to have you. Thank you. 
All right, guys, if you're joining us now, we just wrapped up our call with Dr. Minkoff. And wow, man, what a ton of information that came through with the doc. So, man, if you came in late on that, do yourself a favor and rewind because this dude is. He's a walking encyclopedia. It's great information. Uh, lots of stuff I didn't know. He fielded all of our questions. Everything that we had, he, he answered it. And they're offering us a great discount this weekend for all of our people. So click the link uh, down in the description. Enter our code, Project 49, no spaces. And uh, guys, we appreciate you joining us today. We'll see you next time.